Yeah. Could you give some practical examples of what do I feel my partner's love for his or herself would motivate them to do for his or herself or for themselves? Yes. Perhaps if you don't mind, if we bring up some personal examples sure. where I've had to consider this quite a lot. Um, uh, for example, I've, I've frequently noticed inside of you, inside of you, that there wasn't, there was, that you often engaged sexually even when you were not really present sexually mm -hmm. yourself, where you didn't really want it for yourself. And you'd often engage sexually thinking that that's what I wanted. And under those circumstances, what I have done is I have stopped you from doing so. I've said, look, darling, I don't feel you really want to engage sexually here. Mm -hmm. I feel that you're just doing it because you think it's what I want, yeah. right? And while I do desire you sexually and I do desire to express uh, sexual love with you, I don't feel you are loving yourself if you get involved in this with me at this moment. Mm -hmm. I feel it would be more loving for yourself to have a look at why you feel like you have to do it rather than feeling like you want to. Now, um, sometimes that's meant that we've not had sex for six months because you had to work through specific issues uh, about why you feel the way you do. Now, sometimes you were tardy about <laughs> working through those issues. <laughs> yeah. And of course, then I would see that as a lack of love of yourself and myself as well. Yeah. And I would bring up that. Why are you being tardy about that issue? You yeah, know, so delaying. Why issue. are you delaying dealing with this particular issue mm -hmm. when you could address the issue and we could both be happier as a result of addressing the issue. So, so on both sides, I neither allowed the engagement sexually when I noticed that there was not a desire, nor did I allow the complete avoidance of the issue emotionally. So you didn't, you didn't encourage betrayal, but you always encourage taking personal responsibility. Exactly. And that's definitely the case. Yes. You know? And so the question I was asking myself is if Mary really loved herself, what would she do for herself? Yeah. And I've often said to you, if you really loved yourself, darling, you would want to deal with this emotion. Yeah. If you really cared about yourself and you cared about you know, your relationship with God, you'd want to deal with this emotion. Even if I wasn't in your life, you'd want to deal with this emotion. Yeah. And I've always reminded you of that, even yeah. through those, those periods of time. And that's what you do when you are focused on helping the other person love themselves. Yeah. And so what I'm often doing is asking yourself, if, if I... If I, what would I feel Mary would do if she loved herself here? Mm. Which, you know, so sometimes we'd be driving along even, a simple example, isn't it? It's a, you'd be driving along, you feel like a cup of coffee. Decaf. Decaf. <laughs> soy latte is <laughs> Mary's <laughs> cup of coffee, decaf, soy latte. <laughs> you feel like a cup of coffee, we're almost driving past a place where you can get one. And instead what you do is you say, do you, you say to me, do you want a cup of coffee? And I'd say, no, or um, I'd say, what do you want? <laughs> Why are you asking? Yeah. In, an, in trying to encourage you to state what you want, mm -hmm. to honour yourself. Because that would be loving myself. Because that would be loving rather yourself. Rather than betraying myself, to honour what I, my desire and state yeah. it. Yeah. Rather than asking me whether I want one, the real question is, do you want one? And am I, and I, am I willing to stop? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the real question. But you were avoiding that question yeah. because you were worried that I might not be willing to stop if you just wanted it. Or you might, uh, there's a lot of fears in there yeah. actually. Yeah, and there was a lot of fears yeah. of agreement, getting agreement, yeah, approval and things, so forth. Yeah. And I noticed that, that's not loving self. So what I do then is I go, babe, you need to ask yourself, what do you want here? Yeah. Do you want to stop? Even not knowing what I want, <laughs> what do you want? And eventually you go, yes, I want to stop and have a cup of coffee. So then the question becomes, do I want to stop? I'm the driver. <laughs> do I want to stop and get you one or stop for you to get one? Now, of course, it's no trouble for me to stop and get one. So, of course, I go, of course, I'm going to stop and get you one. Yeah. And that's immaterial to what I want. I might not even want one. Yeah. But if I loved you, I'd firstly focused on what do you want for yourself. Yeah. And if I can enable it, if I can help you get it, and it's not out of harmony with love, then why wouldn't I? Mm -hmm. That's the question I would have to ask myself. Yeah. Why wouldn't I help you get what you want if what you want is not out of harmony with love or if what you want, I don't believe at the moment, is out of harmony with love? Yeah. Why wouldn't I help you to get it? Yes. Yeah. If I loved you, I would. 
Yeah. So, so these are the kinds of things that we've had to work through. Yeah. That you know you you finish up noticing, isn't it? Like, and now you've become more aware as well. Like. Certainly, there's things that have happened uh, recently surrounding the media and different things where my personal fears were being triggered hugely, mm. but I felt out of your love of self would dictate you to take a certain course of action. And so I encouraged you, do the thing that's loving you yeah. and that's important. Even though you and don't I, want to do it. <laughs> I'm going to have to feel some things yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rather than in the past, I would have tried to control your actions or I would have tried to convince you to take an unloving action. Or take um, an action that's not in harmony with my desires. Yes. So it might not have been unloving yeah, just... aside from an action that's not in harmony with what I want. Exactly, mm. exactly, yeah. 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 So, so these are things where you learn after a while. If you're, if you're focused on helping the person, the other person love themselves, yeah. which is really what this issue is about, yeah. helping them work through their own issues of the love of themselves, and actually helping and supporting them to love themselves, yeah. then of course you'd want to do these things. Yeah. Well, I can think of another example with a couple that we know. Yeah. So um, the guy is on the phone to his mum and he's got a lot of unresolved issues with his mum and mm -hmm. he ends up in this interaction where he's largely pleasing his mother mm -hmm. through their conversation, telling her what she wants to hear, making her feel good and safe. Yep. And his partner's listening in and... He gets off the phone and her feeling is, yeah, I'd like you to treat me like that. Even though she knows that what he was doing was actually not loving to himself and made him feel terrible, actually. Yes. And that's an example of where someone's not thinking, what would my partner's love of themselves motivate them to do? Exactly. Because if she was thinking of that, he'd put, up the, put down the phone and she'd say, babe, not only can you not do that with me, but you need to start addressing that with your mum because exactly. it's terrible for you. Yeah. Um, so we often see examples in the negative where we see people ignoring these issues where they're not thinking of what would my partner's love of themselves motivate them to do? Yeah. Rather they're thinking selfishly, ah, oh, my partner's disregarding an area of love of themselves, but I might get That's some... That's fantastic. Draw, Hopefully I'll get something from some that. Some kickbacks <laughs> in the short term. Yeah. Uh, yeah which and it's is never going sad. to be good in the long term. Because God's yeah. laws are totally opposed to that. Yeah. So all of yep. God's laws are trying to correct that. Yeah. So, yeah, naturally, yep. you're not, not, not going to be good results in the long term. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, so this, uh, the, we've got some examples listed here about that we were just discussing. A, a partner who always focuses on pleasing friends and family and neglects their own desires in favour of... Um, their their approval and like their sense of desire, so they yeah we, we even see it uh, to such an extreme where the where one person believes that what they're doing for their family is driven by love, mm -hmm. when it's quite obvious to everyone around them that it's div driven by fear yeah. of what's going to happen if their family don't approve of them if, anymore. If they just be themselves, if and they just go be for themselves, what they want. Yeah. and and as a partner, if you of that person, if you notice that you would go, darling, you're not driven by love here. You're driven by fear. You just try not doing what they say for a while and see what happens. And then you'll see why you're afraid. Yeah. <laughs> and you can make suggestions about how to do that in a loving manner. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to encourage your partner to develop a love of themselves. Yeah. And when you notice your partner doesn't have a love of themselves, you see it as a problem, not only for them, but also for the relationship itself. Because it is a problem for the relationship. Yeah. If a person doesn't love themselves, they're like a black hole, sucking love from everywhere else, but never, ever feeling loved. Yes. And, and that's going to be very, very damaging and exhausting in a relationship. Yeah. So we need to correct those particular things. And I think this is where um, you, the partnership can become very supportive, mm. very supportive of love, love of both individuals. A lot of partners in that scenario that I just gave where the, where, um, the person is always focused on pleasing their family and mm -hmm. getting the approval of their family, often they become jealous or they berate the person and say, what are you doing, that's stupid, yeah. or they just go along with it feeling terrible about themselves. Yeah, or they avoid all the interactions that their partner has with their, their family. family. So that whenever their partner goes to see their family, they go fishing or yes. they, you know, they go <laughs> yeah. do something else. Because, oh, I can't handle what goes on. <laughs> I can't handle what's going yeah, on yeah. there, you know. And, and in all of those examples, 
the partnership becomes less supportive of love and of each other. Yes. Whereas when the, when the person asks, what would my partner's love of themselves motivate them to do there? And I want to honour that. Yep. Then a whole different set of things start happening. Exactly. And it becomes very supportive. You start saying, hey, I want you to love yourself. And this, and this thing isn't loving is not yourself. helping you. Yeah. Can't you see that? Because initially yeah. the partner might even be in denial of it completely. Definitely. Can't you see that this is a problem? And then once they see... Do you want to do something about it? Because if you really loved yourself, you'd want to do something about this now, not tomorrow or next week, next month, next year, yeah. but now. You wouldn't want to stagnate this relationship by choosing to not love yourself anymore. Yeah. You'd want to work through your lack of issue, your, your issues where you lack love for yourself. Yeah. You'd desire it with all of your heart if you truly cherish the relationship. Yeah. And this is where... We can look at our feelings about that. If our partner's not doing that, then your question you've got to ask yourself is, okay, well, our partner doesn't really look like they want to love themselves. Mm. Now, if that's the case, then there's going to be problems in our relationship, actually. Yeah. And I've th then if I'm on the receiving end of that, I've got to go, do I really want to continue in a relationship with someone who not only... You know, who is aware that there is a problem with their lack of love of self mm -hmm. and who has no desire to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Because if you're living with a, such a person, the relationship is definitely going to degrade because all of God's laws are going to try to confront such a yeah. problem, yeah. which is quite a large problem in the love of the self for your partner. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, unless we're prepared to ask ourselves what we feel about that, we also need to know how far we're going to go with allowing that to occur before we decide that we don't want to engage that kind of a life with our partner anymore. Mm. So if we observe our partner constantly harming themselves through their choices, not loving themselves through their choices, so this is the case like with a partner who drinks too much, yes. for example. Or eats uh, excessively. Or ex eats excessively. To or avoid you know, oh, yeah, who, who's basically gluttonous or, mm -hmm. or who, who's, you know, putting on weight to the point where, where it's even become detrimental to their own health. And I feel any weight is probably detrimental to your own health. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. once it's beyond sort of what, what most people classify as average, it's already detrimental to most yeah. people's health. Yeah. And if we look at those kind of things, we would go, okay, I, by living with her or him, I'm really supporting them doing that. Do I want to support my partner slowly destroying themselves? Mm. I, I can't do that. So I've got to at some point say to my partner, look, unless you want to, and, and I don't expect you to, mm. but unless you want to yeah. fix this problem for yourself, I'm willing to support you doing it. But, but unless you want to, I've got to remove myself from this relationship until such a time as you're wanting to address this particular issue. Of course, that wouldn't be the first time you talk of about course. it. Of course. <laughs> you yeah. wouldn't say, You'd right. obviously notice yeah. it over a period of time. And you would, it, love would compel you to say, hey, I want to talk to you about something. And Yeah, although we need to even be careful with it wouldn't be the first time thing. Because if we could feel for certain that their, their real emotion is they don't want to do it, sure. Sure. then we could have one discussion with them and if they feel for certain they don't want to do it, that could be cause enough for us to withdraw from the relationship until such a time that they do. Yeah. Because the reality is if we stay with them while they don't love themselves, there's going to be huge amounts of things demanded of us which are going to be unloving. We're going to have to sit and observe the person we love destroying themselves, mm. which is a very unpleasant thing to do. Yeah. And, and also wouldn't be very loving to ourselves to sit there and have to, have to watch. And so there's... There, there would be motivation for leaving the relationship until such a time as the partner wants to address the particular issues. And if we truly love our partner, we wouldn't be going off running off with somebody else immediately or within a month or a year or even five years perhaps. Yeah. We would be still loving our partner, but we wouldn't necessarily be able to be with them yeah. until they resolve that particular issue. Yeah. Great. Okay. So that's just some examples of what of this question that we would ask ourselves. What would my partner's love of himself do for do? himself? And what's my feelings about that is the focus. Yeah. What do I feel about that? Not yeah. what does my partner feel about that? Because no. what my partner feels about that might be completely different yeah. to what I feel about that. And I suppose if I, if I consider what would my partner's love of themselves uh, cause them to do for themselves... And I can, from God's perspective. From God's also. perspective. Yeah. And if I can see that, like the example we gave earlier about 
uh, you wanting to um, engage something more publicly and me feeling afraid about that, then that's exposing an emotion inside of me that I have the opportunity. I can act in that emotion yeah. and try to control you or... Which would be unloving to yourself unloving. and myself. Yes, for the whole partnership. Yep. Or I can choose to actually go, ah, love would actually cause him to follow his desires and love would cause me to take personal responsibility and deal with whatever emotion comes up. And feel your fears and work the reason That's, why you have them. Yes, yes, which yes. is what I meant, yeah. Yeah, so love would not... So love would do the opposite that most people think love would do, yes. actually. Yeah. So love would not, you know, try to control the other person to stop their action. Mm -hmm. Love wouldn't blame the other person for your own pain. Yes. Love wouldn't do any of those things. What love would do instead is say, right, I support your desire and your... Because your desire seems pure and your it desire seems, seems to be in harmony with love, with love yeah. seems to be in harmony with truth. So I have to support your desire, even though I know that I'm terrified about it. Yeah. And also I have to, if I'm in harmony with love, I have to feel my fear. fear and feel the underlying emotions that are causing my fear if I truly am honouring the fact that I want to love. Yeah. Now, if I don't want to love, then you might do something different. Yes. But, but if you're truly honouring the fact you want to love, that's what you would do. Yeah. yeah. And, and it would feel painful, potentially, yes. <laughs> to even do it. <laughs> it would, might even feel painful to support him and at the same time it's painful <laughs> to, to feel your own fear and, and terror about what, what's happening. But at the end of the day, both will grow. Yes. And the relationship will not stagnate. The relationship will get closer together. It will be stronger as a result of you engaging the laws of God because when you engage the laws of God in a positive way, now all of the laws support your decisions and actions. Absolutely. Rather than trying to, you know, take apart your decisions and actions. Yeah. And the only time our relationship has grown is when I've been willing to... Uh, you've already been asking yourself these questions. Mm -hmm. uh, but well, I, I, I started asking myself these questions like five years before I met you. Yeah. So, so I, you know, I, I had to spend a lot of time asking myself these questions before I even entered a relationship. Yeah. And I had a lot to address as a result. I had to examine and look at every relationship prior to meeting you and look at what I did in those relationships and how out of harmony with love I was in many cases in terms of what I expected mm -hmm. from the other party and what the other party expected of me, which I was willing to give, which yeah. was also out of harmony with love, yeah. and how much I was willing to support their lack of love of self mm -hmm. and how much I was willing to allow their lack of love of myself. Yeah. And how much I was willing to allow my own lack of love of myself. Yeah. I had to examine all of those issues. And this is what helped me do all of that before I even met you. And that was a very beautiful gift for me. And that goes for people who are single, who are not yet in a relationship. Mm. To actually look at your past relationships and your life with regards to these four questions. Mm. Before you enter a relationship, even yes. if you're not already in one, but then yeah. when you are in one, yeah. it's such a gift that you because then when I met you, you were already sort of in fairly a, certain about most things. Yeah, I still have things love. to work through yeah. with regard to love, but I was fairly certain about most things. And and what helped me too, uh, looking through all this, what I used to do was I would write down the four questions for myself mm -hmm. as to what I'd be asking. And then what I did is I applied it to my past relationships. Yes. I, so I didn't have a relationship. I applied it to my past relationships. And then I could see, wow, look at what I did there. That was not loving myself at all. Look at what I did there. That wasn't loving her at all. Mm -hmm. Look at what I did there. I wasn't encouraging her to love herself. I was just encouraging her to avoid a heap of things mm -hmm. in herself, you know. And look at what I did there. I was just encouraging her to avoid how much she didn't care about me, you know. Yeah. And I, I had to look at all the reasons why yeah. I did all of those things and feel about the underlying reasons, the underlying causes. And that helped me work through a lot of emotions. So during that five years, even though I was not in a relationship, I worked through a very large amount of emotions. And I believe now that if I hadn't have worked through many of those emotions, I would never have met you, in fact. I would no, never I have attracted <laughs> you into my life yeah. at the time that I did. And I feel that's something that many people need to consider with regard to these questions. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. <coughs>